Hi there, I'm immigration attorney Heather Poole. Are you trying to get a green card through a spouse, loved one, or employer and did something stupid in the past that even led to a misdemeanor conviction that is now blocking your path? Then this video is for you. Has your fiancé or spouse been refused entry into the U.S. despite having a visa approved by USCIS or been refused a green card because of a minor theft crime committed decades ago, such as a petty theft, breaking or entering, or other minor misdemeanor crime during the more reckless youthful days of acting out? There may be a way to solve this. If your spouse is interviewing at a consulate abroad, the consulate will issue what's called a refusal sheet, which lists the grounds for refusal for the immigrant visa at the conclusion of the immigrant visa interview with your spouse. Usually, if it's a theft crime, the consulate may conclude that the crime is an inadmissible crime, one that blocks green card issuance because it is deemed a crime of moral turpitude. A crime of moral turpitude, or CMT for short, is a legal term of art. It's not defined in the Immigration and Nationality Act and is often carved out through case law in the particular jurisdiction where the crime was committed. Sometimes certain crimes are assumed by the consulate to be crimes of moral turpitude, even if there isn't case law already categorically finding that particular criminal statute as such. Since the burden is always on the immigrant applying for an immigrant visa to prove they are admissible, the burden falls on the immigrant to prove the crime is not a crime of moral turpitude. A crime of moral turpitude must always be waived or the immigrant is not allowed to come into the United States. For an immigrant visa applicant, there are specific criteria to qualify for this waiver, depending on the type of crime, how long ago the crime took place, and if the immigrant has anyone in their life who can be a qualifying relative for the waiver. If the immigrant has more than one crime of moral turpitude, a waiver can cover all of these CMTs. It can waive more than one. If a crime took place more than 15 years prior to the current waiver application, the standard to meet for the waiver is then the applicant must prove to CIS that he or she is rehabilitated and their admission is not contrary to U.S. interests and that he or she deserves the grant of the waiver in a positive exercise of discretion. However, if the criminal conduct that led to the CMT conviction is less than 15 years old, the waiver applicant has to be married to a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident or have a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident parent or child who will suffer extreme hardship if the applicant's waiver is not approved. Extreme hardship is not defined in the Immigration and Nationality Act either, and a finding of hardship often relies on the facts of the situation and how unique they are compared to other waiver applicants who will also be facing hardship and potential separation. USCIS typically looks at extreme hardship arguments from the perspective of first, why can't the U.S. citizen or LPR qualifying relative move abroad to be with the immigrant? And second, why does the U.S. citizen or LPR qualifying relative need the immigrant in the U.S.? What extreme hardship would be created without their immigrant spouse? An extreme hardship waiver can be difficult to obtain. USCIS has provided some guidance on how they interpret hardship and what factors are considered traditionally to pose hardship, and this guidance can be found on USCIS's website. Be careful, though, when relying just on CIS's guidance on what could be considered hardship. The CMT waiver can be extremely difficult to win if a crime involves a quote-unquote dangerous or violent offense not just taking the uh, taking a property without force or a regular theft related offense. This is based on the matter of gene standard, which requires a showing of extremely unusual and exceptional hardship, greater than extreme hardship, to the qualifying relative to be potentially granted a waiver. But given the nature of the offense, that it is dangerous or violent in nature, because it is a waiver case, the immigrant may have an extremely difficult time warranting a favorable exercise of discretion even if the hardship argument is met. Remember, waivers are all discretionary. The alien must deserve this extraordinary exception to the law that would otherwise bar the alien from obtaining their green card or coming back to the U.S. There are potential ways to challenge inadmissibility conclusions made by U.S. consulates, ICE and Immigration Court, and USCIS agents at adjustment interviews. Always consult a licensed and experienced immigration attorney to figure out if there is any argument that you can use that has some legs on it that may be able to work for you to find that you don't have a CMT to begin with. Contact an experienced immigration attorney today to discuss your case. If you would like to see how we can help, 
we will need you to send us the criminal complaint, dispositions, which is sometimes called the criminal transcript, listing the plea, the sentence, and the statutory codes being, that you're being charged with, and any police reports associated with the crime to be able to give you the most thorough opinion on your options. Visit our website, humanrightsattorney.com, to book your appointment or give us a call today. If you would like to hear more about this subject, please comment below.